Good evening and welcome to another Wednesday night devotional. And this one in our series on forgiveness is actually out of Ephesians chapter 4. Not sure where I, why I said actually, but it is out of Ephesians chapter 4. And it's verses 31 and 32. Let's read that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would teach us, that you would inspire us and remind us of things you've said, things you've done. Thank you that you have forgiven us. You are holy and most, most uh, worthy of being praised and thanked. So we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So I, I'm, I'm, oh boy, now bear with me. You probably have never had this happen before. Um, I was tailgated. Yeah, you've been tailgated. Okay, that's my drama for the day. So I'm driving from Corinna to Levant, Levant, however you say it out there, and I'm driving along, and it's one of these days. It was beautiful out. It was 76 degrees, had the windows down. It was farm country. Nobody was on the road. Seriously, you'd look way ahead. Nobody was on the road. Nobody. And I'm just driving about five miles at least under the speed limit. I think the speed limit's probably 45, and I'm doing 40. No more, because it was gorgeous, and I had, the, had my music playing, Christian music. It was great. I was, it was just gorgeous. And then this guy goes and ruins it. I'm driving along, and I look in my mirror, and here's this guy, like, violating the governor. Because she says six feet apart. This guy was, he might well have been in my van with me. Well, I, it's a straightaway and there's nobody on the road. A straightaway with the line that goes like this. And, and so I, I slowed down more and he slows down more. And so I put my arm out and I'm like waving him past. Go ahead, buddy. I'm just up here enjoying the day. And he, stay, he, he ends up beside me, and he's, like, mad at me. And I'm like, dude, I'm trying to enjoy the day here. I couldn't have been more calm. And, and, and he's, like, waving at me. I'm just, I just look, just, just go. I just, like, and anyways, so he pulls in front of me, and you know what he, he does? He does that. He hits his brakes. And I'm, uh, so I'm now, I'm slowing down and I had to have slowed down to like 25 miles an hour. And he's like doing the same speed and there's nobody around, just angry pants. And he's ahead of me and I'm, I'm like, what do I, what am I going to, so I slow down even more. I'm doing like 20 miles an hour now and an angry guy gives up and he starts going faster and I let him get a little bit of distance and I start speeding up, but he sees me speeding up. So now he's, um, oh my God. I just want to enjoy a country road. You know, John Denver sang about those. Take me home. So I follow him for a a couple of miles, and then he pulls over, and like he's blocking this driveway, and I get way over, because there's nobody on the road, and I get way over, and I go past him, I, I just glancing out of the corner of my eye like this, and he pulls right out, and he gets right on my tail again. <sighs> I just want a nice, peaceful road, and look at, and, and smell cows and you know so after a couple miles of my buddy behind me I just I just well all of a sudden I look and, he, and he's leaving me 
<sighs> I calm down and I, I get on this other country road because I had a place to go. In fact, a couple of you that I went to visit, I went and visited, told the same story. Now, this really fits beautifully with this bit here. Because look at what it says in Ephesians 4.31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. I'm certain he slandered me when he got home. And I may have him too. I told the story anyways, and I'm telling it again. I didn't tell you his name or his address or the kind of car. I, I, I Look, it was a white pickup. And it wasn't Barb or, or, or Jim. And, you know, the next verse, for good reason, says, be kind one to another. And I thought I was doing that by letting him go. You know, look, we got the whole road. There's just the two of us for 10 miles, probably. Go, just go ahead. I didn't put any single fingers up. I didn't, I was just like wanting to enjoy the day and just like an old guy let him go. This young guy that is probably in his 20s. Anyways, be kind to one another. And this is real. it really all comes down to let it go and do. The let it go part is let all bitterness. He says that, let it go. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander, put it away. Put Just put it behind you. I told my son years ago that, you know, buddy, it's up to you and I. You and I need to break this curse of anger in our family. And, and we have endeavored together to break it. Because my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, there was anger there. And I had it. And, my, I was, and when my son started showing it, I, I set him down. I said, look, we've got to do something with this anger. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't continue with it. And it's up to you and I to break this curse. And, and we've done that. I really believe we've been successful. Now I can get angry, you know, when, but I'm a lot calmer than I was prior to being a Christian. So this guy in the car, he really manifests this scripture. And, and the statement for us to have out of this is that in order for anger and bitterness to be behind you, to put it away, is we must be forgiving people. Now, I was driving away from that scene going down the country road, and I'm on a series of forgiveness, and it's going in my head that I need to make a decision whether I'm going to let this guy have ownership in my head or I'm going to forgive him. Hmm? That's It comes down. It's simple. Am I going to let him have possession in my nature and in my, you know, inside of me, uh, in my memory banks? Am I going to let him take up residency or am I going to let him, let it, let it go? You know, am I going to forgive him? Because this event took place and I, I could own that. I could, I, you know, I'm going to go back and find his house. And uh, I don't know, cut his grass or something. But you know what I'm saying? It's we have a choice. And and Paul is for good reason saying to the Ephesians. Now, granted, he's not talking about this white pickup and and that in the year 2020. Paul's not talking about that. He was talking to the people in Ephesus. And I'm certain that there were angry people there. He would never have written about bitterness if there wasn't bitterness. He would never have written about wrath or anger or clamor or slander. I, I like, and he says, along with malice. Y you know that those were there because they're there, because there's people there, because there are unmet expectations there. Wherever we go, there's people that are going to let down other people. Amen? Right. I'm going to let you down. Maybe you'll let me down someday. I doubt it. You're just, you're, because, you know, we're to be kind. And, uh, you know, when you're kind to me, um, I, the, I, it just, 
It sp kindness spreads, doesn't it? When you're kind to me, I just, hey, let's be kind to another person. Let's, let's spread this around. Tender-hearted. Now, I've met some tender-hearted people. In fact, the couple that I visited after this event were our two just manifesting individuals of tender-heartedness. Uh, they are the pictures. You know, when you open up the dictionary for tender-hearted, this nice couple, their faces are in there. You should be in there too. I should be in there. Tender-hearted. If there's an area in this passage that I'm weak on, it's tender-heartedness. Because I can be cynical. Uh, I can be sarcastic. I'm just being honest with you. It's, 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 it, it's the area that I need to grow in. We all have areas we need to grow in. Let's be honest, right? You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And, and so we have areas that we can grow on. And the important thing is that we're honest with each other and with ourselves. And we can look in the mirror and we can say, I have an area where I need to work on. And I'm, here's the thing. I'm not going to be able to do it. I won't. I will fail every time. I have to go to God and say, all right, here's an area I need work on, and I need to be tender-hearted, and only your Holy Spirit is going to bring me to that place where I am tender-hearted, where I'm not as cynical, or I like being sarcastic. For me, it's a bit of humor. Sarcasm is, is I can, I use it for humor's sake. You know that if you've been around me for any bit. The thing is, is that he goes on and he says, we've got to be forgiving people. We have got to be forgiving people. It's, it, it, you will never get rid of bitterness. You'll never get rid of wrath and anger and any of these other things. These will be part of you until you're a forgiving person until you're able to preemptively choose to forgive before the offense even takes place. That's where we want to be. We want to be in a place where we're already forgiving others. And, and so when we know that there's going to be that white pickup or a red sports car or a big noisy motorcycle that's going to do things and we should choose already, kind-heartedly, I'm going to forgive that person that's being a, less than our expectations. Hmm? That's where it comes down to. Now, there's a reason why. There's got to be a reason. We know how. We, we know what, you know, we know that around us, the what, there's always what's and how's and why's and all that. Uh, but we know what's going on. There's people and we know how it happens but the why is at the very end of that verse just as God in Christ also has forgiven you you see this in order for me to forgive other people I've got to put it into this perspective just as God in Christ has forgiven you now going back to that bit in uh in, in Matthew, in chapter 6, like 14 and 15, where he says, we'll forgive if you forgive. If you don't forgive, we're not going to forgive. That's God. Don't even think about being forgiven if you're not willing to forgive. Why? Because Christ, God in Christ has already forgiven you. He died on the cross and empowered. He resurrected from the grave and sent his Holy Spirit. We have full capability of forgiving. We can put away bad bitterness. No longer are those unmet expectations going to own us. That guy, there's going to be another guy driving a pickup. There's going to be someone tailgating me again. I'll want to kindly let them go. And maybe they'll get angry too, but I'm going to already, right now, I'm already forgiving them. And you can do that too. 
whether it's your spouse, your kid, your parents. We know about parents, oh my goodness, uh, especially if you're young. And uh, parents will eventually come around. You look, if you're younger than 25, trust me, your parents will come around. It, it, it's just, that's the way it is. But we choose to forgive. <laughs> yeah. We choose to forgive because God forgave. That's what it comes down to. So, in, in order to put anger and bitterness behind you, we must be forgiving and kind-hearted people. Give that to God. If you're not, if you're not kind-hearted, just fall along with me, walk beside me, and because that's my area that I need to sharpen up on. And maybe yours is something else. Maybe it's malice. Maybe it's slander or clamor or anger or wrath. Bitter, whatever it is, give it to God and he will walk with you. He, in his Holy Spirit, will, will bring you to a, an, an educated, informed, insightful way of growing in that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word that it's true, that it moves us, that it inspires us, and it rattles our cages where we're comfortable. Lord, bring us to a place where we're more and more like you in personality, nature, and character. Father, I love the idea of being tender-hearted. Help me in that. Lord, we love you. We need you. Would you bless us? Bless us indeed. Would you expand our territory? May hand be with us and keep us from evil. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.